Thank you. Like most Kenyans, I grew up in a large family. I'm one of eight siblings. I have eight siblings. On a farm, we had cows and chickens and a garden patch. And I remember vividly as a child going through the garden with my mother just after the rains. The tapestry of textures and colors of the plants, the crops, the trees laden with fruit, the sounds, the pollinators, the bees and the wasps, and the smells, the awful smell of brushing past the tomato plant, but quickly forgiven and forgotten with the taste of the fresh fruit off the vine. The vivid colors of the butterflies, the ladybirds, and even the greens of the caterpillars and the aphids. And I remember during the dry season with my father, watching him patiently standing, watering the banana plants for ages, and I as a child patiently watching, thinking, how much water do these things consume? By the time I was 18, as most intelligent 18-year-olds are, I'd chosen my career path, and I left school to join a band, a rock band. <laughs> Fifteen years later, I found myself standing in another kind of farm, this time in South Africa. It was a hydroponic farm, and unlike my mother's farm, that had, was a kaleidoscope of different colors and textures and smells, this farm was monochromatic in color, a sea of greens, lettuce for the salad pack industry. There were no sounds, there were no birds, there were no bees, there were no insects at all. And the once sweet air was tinged with the acrid smell of chlorine. Einstein said, two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And he questioned the universe. And in my infinite stupidity, I stood there aghast and thought, this is the kind of agriculture we must take back to Kenya. And two years later, I found myself standing in my mother's concrete courtyard behind a failed prototype of my version of a hydroponic farm. I didn't have the knowledge, and it completely failed. What did survive, though, were hundreds of lettuce seedlings, which I took and put into my mother's soil in the garden. And yes, you know exactly what happened. Two months later, I had over a ton of lettuce that I had to sell. And that was my entry into the agricultural space as an ag entrepreneur. And slowly, as most businesses do as they evolve, I grew my business, I grew my brand, I, grew my, my, I diversified my products. And it was while spraying tomatoes that a tragic accident almost happened. My mother got caught downdrift from the pesticides and became very, very ill. And it made me step back and think, through absolute ignorance as a farmer, a new farmer, no training, no education, no backing, I was lacing the food my family were eating and my consumers were eating with toxins. And there was no recourse. There were no regulations, there were no standards, there was nobody to stop me. And I vowed there and then to start to only continue producing food if I could do it in a sustainable and safe manner. And that put me now into the organic arena. And as I searched for information in Kenya, found very little, I started getting knowledge and information sent to me from my siblings abroad. And as my business grew, I started to train a small group of farmers to come into becoming my supply chain on the market. One thing became quite clear is that farmers lacked information, they lacked knowledge, and they were a very aging population. Early on, I was invited to write for a magazine, The Organic Farmer magazine, and share my experiences in my organic journey with farmers across the country. Later, the same organization, a Swiss organization called the BioVision Foundation, then invited me to help them put content together on a website, the Infinite website, which we started developing and aggregating all of the sustainable agricultural information we could get from the institutions around the East African region, putting it in one portal so that farmers could access it, distilling it into farmer-friendly uh, language. But at the back of my mind, I knew that farmers were unable to access this really critical knowledge because they simply didn't have the tools. Until 2010, price wars in our mobile network operators brought the prices of mobile phone connectivity and handsets plummeting. And within a period of eight months, nearly half of the country had mobile phones. Over 20 million mobile phones were in the Kenyan population. And that's when I thought, we need to get this content onto mobile phone. And that's when I developed iCow. So what iCow literally is, is taking rich, sustainable agricultural content and bringing it in a format that farmers can access it on the tools that they already have. We do three things. 
We deliver knowledge to farmers, three SMSs a week, at less than 0.03 cents per SMS. That's dollars, cents per SMS. It's what they can afford, it's what they've told us. And we build their knowledge slowly around livestock, crops, soils. We build tools for farmers, the second thing. Tools that can help them, handhold them as partners and help them. Farmers, it's animals, for example, with a cow, the calendars. A cow that goes on heat and is inseminated. A farmer registers the animal onto his mobile phone and we walk with him. We tell him what he needs to be doing for this specific animal right up until the time she gives birth, ensuring the animal is healthy and gives birth to a healthy calf. We do the same for chickens. We also enable farmers come directly onto the platform to access any information they want 24-7. We have a product called Smart Top Farm Tips. And this literally is like an offline wiki of agricultural content. Our product is built, on, built for low-end dumb phones, not for smartphones. And it costs, and farmers pay. And then three critical areas of agriculture, soils, pollinators. We build tools there where farmers can find out about the soil, the generic soils in their region by putting on statistics from the government on the soil tests that have been done and then advising them to get their soils tested and giving them the contacts of the people, the linkages to those people who can actually help them. Pollinators, information about pollinators. I'm sure we've all seen this. Louis Michel and his group did Save the Bees um, graffiti across the walls in England. 75% of all of our crop species rely on pollinators. Can I see a hand up from people in the room who actually knew that, that 75% of our crop species, how many hands up? It's not a lot. Imagine the farmers. 50% of our planet produce the food that we eat, and they don't know this. So what we do is try and make this information available to farmers across the country. Our profile of farmers today, we did a, a survey um, on 100 of the farmers. We have over 160,000 on the iCow platform. I looked at the ages. 32.5 years, these are young people. We're encouraging a young crop of farmers coming into food production, safe food production. Our national average is 55 to 60. Females, 34%. Three years ago when we started, that was at 15%. The education level of our farmers, 61%. It's high school, 13 to 15 years, and they've had no education after that. There is a thirst for knowledge. We all have a thirst for, no for knowledge. And it's important that our tools enable people at the bottom end of the pyramid to get this knowledge. Land size. The interesting factor there, 29% of the farmers were entrepreneurs. These are job creators. They're, these are the people that will alleviate poverty for others if we enable them through knowledge. The impact we've seen. I'd like to just talk about the increased yields Milk. Farmers that have been on the platform for between three to six months see an increase in milk yield in their animals for between one to three litres, depending on what state the animal was in when they started. This translates into anything from between one to about four dollars in terms of income per day, per animal. And the last fact there, that 69% say that they share the information that they receive. This is critical and important. When we think about transformation, we have to think about scale. We have to think about cost, and we need to think about rapid catalytic scale. Agriculture is central to the Sustainable Development Goals, absolutely central, and we need to get it right. This is Winnie. I came to know about Winnie through her son, Aaron, who was part of our survey. There's Aaron. Aaron it was an IT specialist. His mother worked really hard to afford to give him a career that she thought would enable him to bring her out of poverty. And he went to Nairobi and spent many months trying to get a job in IT, and he failed. And he went back to his village farm, and he said to his mom, I want to start doing chickens like you. And she said, I'll give you a loan on the condition that you register with ICAO because I want to know that you know what you're doing. So Aaron registered. The batch of chickens that you can see in that picture were his ninth batch since he started. And he now says that he wants to start up. In Kenya, we call it Kenchik. In the States, it's probably KFC, but he wants to start retailing 
value-added chicken. But more importantly is the next picture. I'll go back to the last picture there, the little girl in the corner. That was a picture that was sent to us. Being able to inspire and educate the youth in agriculture is really important. And I like that ICAO is actually letting that happen. We have one of our, our farmers called Mercy. She's 13 years old. She was tired of seeing her mother's animals suffer. So she registered her mother on ICAO. And today they have 20 chickens. They had two when they started. So being able to transform using technology, and like I say, being able to spread it catalytically is important. Dr. Bitange Ndemo, our former permanent secretary in the Ministry of ICT, he actually launched ICAO. And I remember him saying, he was called to launch cows in the cloud. And he said, I don't know whether I should be doing this. It's very different. But he did. And today, he talks about poverty being where knowledge is suppressed, and mostly in countries where knowledge is suppressed, and how tools like ours and M-Pesa have empowered poor people to just transcend that which we assume to cause poverty. And as we know, the first of the SDGs is to eradicate poverty. ICAO has proved that successful agriculture starts in your head. We must invest in building farmer knowledge. Many of the solutions so far from developing agencies and governments all over the world, when, a far when farmers say they don't have access to finance, brick and mortar are put in place, there are more banks put in place, there are more solutions like that. When we hear that farmers don't have access to finance, we say they do. Their asset base can give them more access to finance, being able to make more from what you have, being able to save, gives you access to finance. Three things I'll leave here. Transformation requires thinking differently. It requires thinking ecosystems. It's not just my little company alone that can actually put ICAO out there. We've had to think partnerships and ecosystems very, very carefully, and the right partnerships, which I heard mentioned by Frederick. The right partnerships. Partnerships that can help us scale, partnerships that have our same sort of ethos. And when we think of the ecosystems around, we need to know that we've got valuable content, researched agricultural content. We need to know that we've got, our, we've got partners in content, partners in the mobile network operator space, partners in tech. I'm a musician, farmer, techie. How did that happen? And I have no big experience in any of those, but it's really important that the partners that work with us do, that we join those dots and bring those ecosystems and partners together to make ICAO happen. The other thing is we need to think scale. When we first started, I insisted that we work across all the mobile networks and found that none of them were ready to market. And marketing in my space is the biggest thing. None of them were ready to market because they marketed a product for their competitors. So it meant that we had to start choosing partners that we could work with that would actually give us what we wanted. And that's why we chose Safaricom. Safaricom, who are the, uh, the implementers of M-Pesa, the owners of M-Pesa, and M-Pesa, we all know how M-Pesa as mobile money is transformed, and we're hoping that in time, ICAO will follow their same footprint across not only Kenya, but the Vodacom footprint, hopefully, across the world. And we need to think speed. We really do need to think speed. One of the biggest beefs that I have with development is time. It takes so much time for anything to get done. And honestly, where we are today, where we've reached the planetary boundaries, already, so many areas, and like I've said, key to those, they're underpinned by agriculture. We don't have time. So I'm going to end this with Darwin. Somebody said to me, you're bringing Darwin into the room. So here he is. It's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It's but the ones that will be most responsive to change. And we're in that position now. It's our time to change. Thank you. <laughs>